With the sheer amount of superheroes created in the history of comicdom, there are bound to be a few origin stories that are just absolutely wild. I'm Adam Andrews and today on Top 10 Nerd, it's the top 10 superhero origin stories that you've probably never heard before. Number 10, The Creeper. Jack Ryder was a super outspoken TV news guy in Gotham City. Now on TV, he's the host of a show where he tries to stir the pot to get everyone talking about topics like super advanced medical science and nanotech. Ryder was doing some investigating into some new tech called nanocell therapy created by one Dr. Vincent Yatz. He discovered an experimental mixture which enabled the body to regenerate from practically any injury of any kind. Unfortunately though, Jack tried to steal Yatz's tech at the same time as a group of mobsters and so to keep the tech safe, the good old doctor injected his last unstable sample of nanocells into Jack Ryder. Then, right after that happens, the gangsters grant Jack a one way ticket to the afterlife and blow his head off. Now, most of us, well, we'd be lights out and game over by that. But thanks to the nanocells reacting with his body's chemistry, Jack is completely resurrected with the ability to turn into the Creeper, this bright yellow skinned, green haired madman with hypnotic intimidation powers, a pain inducing laugh and superhuman agility, strength, speed, stamina, and enhanced reflexes. Number 9, Ultra Boy. Ultra Boy, or as he is known in his civilian guise, Joe Na, possesses many of the same powers as Superboy, including superhuman speed, strength, flight, stamina, breath, vision, and invulnerability, which he gained from being swallowed by a massive space energy beast, which is essentially a giant space whale. Hence the biblical Jonah name. While he was inside the energy beast's stomach, the radiation inside altered Jonah to give him superpowers. The only issue with Jonah, and it's a big one, is that he can only use one power at a time. This means that if he wants to fly through space at super speed, he must wear a spacesuit to survive in the cold vacuum. Or when using his power for super strength, he is not invulnerable and can therefore get tired feel muscular pain, or even pull a muscle. Jonah can switch these abilities almost instantly, but he needs to make the conscious choice to do so, which honestly sounds exhausting. Number 8, Jack O'Lantern. The son of a poor farmer, Daniel Cormack was raised in Ireland. Now, like most Irish people, Daniel came into contact with the Irish fairy people, some of whom he managed to become good pals with. It turns out that the fairies actually really liked Daniel because Maeve, the fairy queen, granted him a magical lantern as repayment for his friendship to the fairies. The power of this lantern is pretty interesting. It slowly waxes until its peak at midnight and then slowly wanes until it's at its weakest at noon. With his lantern, Jack is able to fly, teleport himself or others, generate blasts of energy, create illusions, generate fog, change the size of enemies and bind them inside the lantern. And he can also become superhumanly strong and durable. Using the lantern, he took up the identity of Jack O'Lantern and became Ireland's premier superhero eventually joining the Global Guardians, even getting two successors in the form of Marvin Noronza and eventually Liam McHugh. Number seven. The Red Bee. The Red Bee from DC Comics comes from a time in comic books and the superhero genre when superheroes were really just pulp vigilantes who had some kind of really minor edge over the criminals they would be thwarting. Rick Raleigh was the assistant to the district attorney and with this look at the criminal justice system, he grew tired of seeing criminals escape justice either through technicalities or because the court system was just too slow. Growing fed up with this, Rick decided he would create a costume identity to bring criminals to justice. But as a normal intelligent guy with a flawless moral compass and a decent right hook, he didn't really have an edge over those he was facing. Enter Michael. Michael was a trained bee like the insect that Rick would keep in his belt buckle. Michael was a unique kind of bee though. As we know, bees don't survive for too long after they sing someone, and luckily, Michael had the advantage of being able to sting people multiple times. Michael, coupled with Rick's fists and other equipment, would be the bane of villains everywhere, and thus, the red bee was born. Number six. 
cloud. There's really no other way to say this. Marvel's cloud is a sentient nebula hundreds of thousands of years away from becoming a star. That's actually what they are. Cloud began to notice stars disappearing from the space surrounding it, which caused the nebula to feel fear for some reason. And because of that, a newly emerged cosmic cube known as Cubic was attracted to Cloud and came to their aid. Now hoping that the Earth's heroes could somehow do something to help, Cloud made their way to our planet only to inadvertently cause a young couple, Carol Faber and Danny Milligan, to get distracted while driving and crash their car. When Cloud attempted to help the couple, they tried to enter into their minds but were instead bombarded with the unique human psyche. For some reason, this transformed Cloud into a replica of Carol, with no memories of their former self. This made Cloud the perfect target for the Secret Empire, which is a cult-like offshoot of Hydra that then weaponized Cloud to suit their own nefarious ends before she was eventually taken on to the Defenders team. Number 5. Elongated Man When Ralph Dibney was a tiny little Ralph Dibney, he saw a contortionist at a carnival and he was instantly down to be able to be like that guy. Everyone had their thing, and for Ralph, his thing was trying to figure out how someone could twist and fold their body into all sorts of shapes like a contortionist could. Obsessed with learning the secrets of the contortionists, for years and years, Ralph figured out that all the contortionists he observed drank the same drink. Not some crazy formula, not some kind of tea, but it was actually a popular soft drink known as Gingold. Now, Ralph knew for the most part that it was just a coincidence that they all drank the same drink. But that doesn't mean he wasn't going to bet everything he had on it. Ralph literally taught himself chemistry and he used his newly found chemistry skills to create a super concentrated extract from the fruit that was the basis and heart for Gingold, the Gingo fruit. And what do you know, the super concentrated extract allowed him to make any part of his body stretch to a ridiculous degree. What's that I hear you say? Why yes, this does make no sense. Number 4. Flex Mentallo The Doom Patrol is a unique team to say the least. Their whole thing is that their powers are weird enough that they were shunned, made fun of, etc, etc, and so they pulled together to make their own team. A bunch of them could make this list, but the one member who I think deserves to make it onto this list is Flex Mentallo. He first appeared in Doom Patrol Volume 2, number 35 in 1990, and was essentially created by another metahuman by the name of Wallace Sage. Wallace has the ability to take any drawing he makes and turn it into real life. With that power, he created Flex. Now Flex himself was given the mysterious and kind of hilarious power of muscle mystery, which allows him to alter reality by flexing different muscles. For example, flexing his Scalinus Minimus, Flex has the ability to survive in the vacuum of space for an extended amount of time. His other powers include enhanced senses, mind control, precognition, reality alteration, superhuman durability, superhuman strength, and telepathy, all by flexing different muscles. Number 3. Puck the Alpha Flight member known as Puck was at one point literally just a little person who pushed himself to turn his body into an almost perfect physical specimen, able to lift hundreds of pounds and fight as well as his fellow Alpha Flighters. But this was before his Alpha Flight days. He had tons of adventures and his pretty basic but mysterious backstory added to his likability. Now the dumb part came much later on when it was revealed that Puck was actually much older than he seemed and was not actually born as a little person. Apparently, Puck used to be 7 feet tall and was a mercenary and adventurer who was born near the start of the 20th century. As a merc, he was hired to steal the Black Blade of Baghdad, and he totally did it, but then it unleashed an ancient magical being known as Black Razor. In order to defeat Black Razor, Puck sucked him into his own body, becoming immortal in the process, but also losing half of his height and being trapped in the form of a little person. Why? I don't know. Number 2. 
Whizzer. Bob, Frank, and his father Emil were traveling through Africa when they both unfortunately came down with an extremely deadly illness. Now, needing a transfusion in order to save their lives, Emil made it a mission to find someone who would be willing to help them and to save Bob's life. Apparently, there was absolutely no one who could help them out. But then, to make matters so much more worse, Bob also got bitten by a very deadly cobra. Bob was not having a good go of things here. And when that happened, a mongoose then just happened to show up and it introduced that snake to the afterlife. Now, of course, this must have been a sign, and Emil had the bright idea to use this mongoose for the blood transfusion to save his own son's life. Don't worry about how a mongoose and a human are completely different. He was going to save his son's life. Not only did the mongoose DNA running through his son's veins save his life, but naturally, this had the added benefit of allowing Bob to now run at super speed? Apparently though, this was just common information as Emil explained it as nonchalantly as pouring a cup of tea. Later on, it would be revealed that Frank had natural powers that were just jump started by the addition of the mongoose DNA, but of course, that's only after they realize how that makes no sense. And in at number one today is Liesl Pawn. The Green Lantern Corps, actually every Lantern Corps really, has members of all different shapes and sizes. But what utterly baffles me personally is knowing that the Green Lanterns have a super intelligent, justice seeking smallpox virus on their roster. Assigned to Sector 119, Liesl Pawn wasn't really able to join the other lanterns in team meetings on the Green Lantern world because this lantern risked infecting all the others. Liesl Pawn's partner in Sector 119 was called Remus. Now, I say was because Remus was a fatal victim of Despotellus, another sentient virus and also part of the Yellow Lantern Corps, the Sinestro Corps. Despotellus infected 85% of the planets in Sector 119, which caused the passing of Liesl's partner. Despotellus then went on to infect Guy Gardner. Now, wanting revenge for the attack on her sector and the loss of Remus, Liesl Pawn was injected into Guy Gardner and then did battle with Despotellus inside of Guy Gardner, defeating and capturing the Yellow Lantern virus, who Liesl brought back to Oa for a Green Lantern doctor to work on a vaccine to wipe out Despotellus tell us for good. And that's all I know about this character. And there you have it. Did you learn anything new? Did I just tell you all the same origin stories you've heard a bunch of times before? Let me know your thoughts down below. But for now, I'm Adam Andrews. This is Top 10 Nerd, and I will catch you on the Flippy Flop. Stay safe and peace out, nerds.